All right, so I'd like to document for myself and for others the setup of the uh, fairly popular C30 or sorry CH341 Alpha uh, programming dongle. Um, it's pretty capable. It can do a lot of different things, uh, but getting it set up is a little bit of work up front. So the first thing is um, you want to download this AS Programmer suite, um, which you can find online with uh, minimal trouble. And um, <clears throat> this suite includes a driver. So inside the drivers, you'll want to go in and do a setup install and do a yes on that. And you'll see this guy wanting to install this WDM INF and hit install. Um, so actually, uh, huh, that was weird. Um, I actually did this five minutes ago, but that'll say okay otherwise. And then um, you can also right click on this guy here and do an install. And then once you've done that, uh, go ahead and open up Device Manager, just so that you can see what's going on. If you have speakers, you hear a little bit of a parade here. But I'm going to go ahead and install physically the USB device now into my computer, and you'll see some refreshing going on. Um, if you do this wrong, you'll see some PCI devices here, but these were already here, so those, it's not anything weird happening. I'm going to change my view um, to devices by connection. Um, and I'll go down and look at the USB buses, and we'll see on one of them there he is the ch341 alpha so he's correctly set up now and having done that once you're um oh so this this program that's inside the uh folder you can just create a shortcut to it uh if you get the not um installable but the portable version so when you open that what you can do is go to ic and you can go to spi and visit um, the wind bond section and find the um, W25Q64 Frank Victor. And if you grab that guy, it'll load it up as, a, this is the same as 64 megabit, this number that they're showing there. Um, <clears throat> and 256 pages is the known for this device. Now, even if you're not programming one of these, this is good because with this in here, you can actually hit the read button and um, with no physical device, it will read. Um, so I'm going to hit that read button now and you'll see it, uh, it's able to talk to the programmer and you're starting to read. So there's no canceling that, unfortunately. So grab yourself a cup of water while you wait. In our case, we're going to move on to other greener pastures. So, um, this thing is a pretty capable device. Let me show you a little slideshow that me and grandma put together for you. Well, wait, no, nope, not grandma. Um, but, uh, it's a slideshow all the same. So let's see. Um, I put in a folder called help in mind, which you're not gonna have on your download. All right, so let's talk about this kit. So when you order this kit, uh, the absolute minimum that you need is gonna be the programmer itself and the clip, uh, the ship clip um, for most applications. And uh, it's also probably good to have some of the flying leads. And if you're gonna be doing BIOS chips, this pass through is nice, but you can get by just as fine. And as well with longer, not long, not these here, but longer than these jumpers. And apologies that I'm on, um, a screen grab this the system I have needs a display link and my my adapters uh, not set up for that so I'm using VGA and a screen grab no recorder today so again uh, this is the setup process that we talked about you'll want to be sure that you do that the first time um, and then you know once you've set that up you'll have this type of communication now you can see in this image that I've got an M93 C series this is the 56 which is a 2k chip as it's described there two kilobits um, and uh, it's a 256 by 8 according to that, though the manufacturer does have a different listing on that for the exact chip. So I think that's kind of potato potato uh, overall. Um, <clears throat> so uh, again, don't be on the COM port thing. All right, so just comparing the pinout between a 25X series and a 93X series, these are both um, SPI capable chips, but you'll notice like the chip select, the VCC, well actually everything other than the VCC is pretty much in a different place. Um, so what you wouldn't want to do is like try to connect uh, a header that's been prepped for the one for the other. Uh, you might potentially cause some damage. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, don't do that. But uh, what I would say is um, if you do have a lot of different 93X devices that you're making, in my case, like in my drawing here, I've got a mention of like three different colors, uh, gray, red, and black, which is that you could be not connected, you could be hot, or you could be ground, depending on whether you need to set an org mode to a certain state. In my, my experience so far, I'm running these on a five volt power supply with no interaction with the org pin and having no issue with reads or writes. Um, and then on the 25X series, I'm running on a 3.3 .3 volt system without any issue at all. 
and um, there's no org pin on that device. Um, although I will mention that um, the SPI mode on this thing can actually do like quad writes, but we're not set up for that with this device, and that's just gonna make things faster, and we're not in a hurry here. Okay, so this is my header for doing um, M93 series. Basically, uh, rather than modifying the box, and I talked about this in another video, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but rather than modifying the devices or doing any cutting or soldering, I just use flying leads and maybe some glue. And this is the other side of that same cable. And my color code varied because I ran out of leads, so I'm using gray or red here for the VCC, and I'm using um, white or black for the ground, just for a lack of uh, having enough cables to choose a good color code. And you can use any color code you want, but just bear in mind that this is what you have to do in terms of what I'm representing here in this setup. Now on the left, um, the uh, setup is actually, you don't have to worry about the color code at all, but on the right for the 93X you do. The reason why is that on the 25XX you can use a straight through. So this is for the 93XX, this is how I connect my cable. And um, <clears throat> you can see my color code here, I have the white and gray instead of the red and black. Um, and so, uh, yeah, uh, gray is hot there on that um, that layout. So everything's on the one side. I don't have to use the other side of the board at all. Uh, and I'm able to talk to the 9.3 series just fine. Um, and here's an example of a 9.3 Charlie 5.6 as an IC900 immobilizer chip, which you're able to read and write to with this setup done as described um, using the 5 volt uh, power, which is what we've grabbed in one of these with the uh, BCC pin. Um, <clears throat> so another thing to mention is that from um, like say for example the IS300, uh, 2001 or actually some prior as well, and then all the way up to 04, use a M3 or M93 Charlie uh, 56. 56 is two kilobit, right? And then the next year, 05 and on, they start using the M93 Charlie 86. And so I have these scripts here that I'm showing you back on the uh, 2K and the 16K. And within this guy, um, the dot, dot, dot don't have that literally. Actually, it should be one continuous line, um, or you can add a line break if you're uh, into that in, in um, your XML. But if you have this, you're able to um, copy the settings over and not have to worry about um, some of the finer details. Um, and in my case, I actually have a thing that does that while fixing the GUI because I found a lot of times this programmer can like get kind of dorked out and you won't be able to see um, parts of your window. Um, like this gets collapsed kind of. Um, and you're unable to grab it and move it, uh, like to the point like it's invisible, like you have to slam it up against the side of a large screen to be able to see it. So I have a, a script that just fixes that. If you have that issue, you can explore that as well. Uh, in any case, yeah, those are just a difference between those two chips, the 2K and the 16K. And the reason for that is uh, your cousin Vinny. So from 05 and on, uh, you have to have a VIN in your ECU. Uh, and some, some companies did that earlier, but for like the Toyota and the Lexus by 05, there's a different chip to make room for the VIN. There's actually not room otherwise. Um, <clears throat> So I guess uh, I'll take a moment to highlight that just because uh, I'm trying to make this more than just a tutorial, but, but kind of a, a bit of a learning experience for people who are um, maybe like self-taught and have, have some holes in their education or have other experiences and knowledge that um, you know, don't immediately pertain to this exact application. So if I go to some bins that I've been saving here, um, I've got a... Uh, Virgin bin for a 56 here. Um, and bear in mind, like the 01 IS300 has a different layout than the um, 02 and 03. And if I look at this in XVI, actually that guy looks like it's not um, a real file. That was weird. We'll do this guy here. So, oh, that's a text file to remind me of something, sorry. So here's the concept of the layout in here, right? And you have, that's what, 16, um, or sorry, 2K K bit look like. Uh, and then if you compare that to like the larger um, 16K bit, you'll see this amount of information. And so like oddly, the VIN follows down here uh, further on. So oddly, like even though the um, information for the keys for the immobilizer are actually in the same place, um, the addressing of the chip is different. And so it's worth pointing out, like if you have a um, ECU from a 2005, uh, and you were to swap the immobilizer chip between it with an 04, uh, neither one would work. Uh, and by the same token, if you took any one of those years and you programmed the system flash, which is not what we're doing here, there's a bunch of other flash that I have no idea how to program. I, I know a guy who does who's pretty good at it. Uh, but if you were to program a 05 as an 04, um, then it would no longer work uh, because um, it would be trying to address the table space for a 2K bit fi uh, a file system, not a 16K bit file system. And the chip actually has a different address space um, not just because of having more memory, because it's actually different because of having more memory. So just bear that in mind. 
Uh, but the VIN winds up down here on the 05 and later. So there's there's that, and I digress. We'll go back to our uh, wonderful slideshow. Uh, by the way, Marissa Tomei was a god in her days and really hilarious. So uh, good movie, even if you don't like old movies. And there's Joe Pesci. All right, so the other thing to mention is um, we're not doing anything that will affect your calibration ID or your CVN by doing anything inside the AI ID prompt for the immobilizer. That, again, is stuff at the system level. And it's also worth mentioning that if you've done anything like to modify or tune your car, uh, the Bureau of Automotive Repair and the EPA and the DMV are actively recording calibration IDs and CVNs. And you might pass smog with a modified ECU a couple of times, but at some point or other, you or some other person who's attracted attention and maybe like a road sniffer is associating your plate and they're doing lookups or other intelligent heuristics with these things, um, they're going to they're gonna find you eventually. And so always wear a clean ECU when you do your smog. And of course, wear your, your, your racing ECU when you're racing, cause, uh, or in Mexico, because in California, you would never, ever run around with a modified ECU. That would be just, nobody would do that. Anyway, I digress. Uh, this is the setup for the straight through for doing the EEPROM, like the 25X series. So this is why I said you don't need a color, color code at all. And in fact, you don't even need that PCB. Again, you can use long headers to connect that to the chip clip. Um, well, sorry, the, 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 the prongs that when you, you pull on this thing, it slides. Um, opening closed. So uh, you don't have to mess with that. Now, another thing is uh, this is what the wind bonds look like, and there's quite a few different ones. Um, and uh, there are some things that are different than my situation that you might want to know about. So again, for you know the sake of learning and knowledge here, uh, there's a guy I found the other night that inspired me to screw around with this because I already had this set up for the M93. And I'm like, well, this was meant for the 25X. I should try this. So this dude here wrote a really good write-up on his is a 25 Q112, much, much different. I don't know if that's a date code 2022, but he was very concerned about the 1.8 volt uh, characteristics of this chip. And that actually works out pretty well if you buy the Amazon kit, that's like twice the price of the regular one because this guy is actually a 1.8 volt adapter board that he goes into gross detail on. Um, for me, I wasn't concerned because I had a fried motherboard I was playing with. So I, I, I risked it, I had no issue, but your mileage could vary depending on your chip. Now I can tell you that my chip that we looked at earlier my T5X is um, three, three volt uh, per the specification, so I'm not concerned there. Um, all right, so again, this is what that chip would look like, and um, that was me reading it, and the first lines are always Fs, but, but when you do read it, you'll get a checksum back. Those checksums vary greatly. Um, they'll change every time you boot the system, so don't expect that to be something you can statically manage, and I don't know what happens if you write that forcefully. So there's this jumper on these CH341 Alpha boards, and um, on the back, there's some really important information there for you to read. So uh, one, two tells you something and two, three tells you TTL. So if you've been eating at say Panda Express a lot or travel to Taiwan about half the year like I do or have other family and friends that are Chinese, then you'll be able to uh, figure out that that means something. And you can ask them, but they're not technical, so they can't translate that. So I use an image translator and this top one's where the money's at. This is where you want to be, always on pin one to two. And the reason for that is because that means programming, and which is what we're doing, which is uh, kind of ambiguous because that was, I thought the case either way, but whatever. Now the other one, this is where it gets really good, TTL, the Chinese version of those words there uh, in simplified or, or um, uh, traditional uh, Mandarin Chinese writing, well, any, any Chinese writing, translates, translates to shabu machine. So Shabu machine, let's, let's think about that. It's not a machine, it's, it's a mode, right? Shabu mode or Shabu way. Yeah, Shabu way. I'm not a sponsor yet. All right, so uh, you have a picture here of me riding to the 64 FV where the programmer wasn't initially found. Um, and this was on my tablet the other night. And so what I found out was, um, again, if you uh, move this USB programmer, um, between two computers, it has to be done again. Or if you have two programmers, each one has to be done the computer twice in terms of getting it initially set up correctly. Um, it, it doesn't detect it um, on its own. It's, it's a little bit of a hassle. All right, so that's pretty much the gist of all of that. Um, you know, once you've got this whole thing installed, you're able to use it pretty effectively. Um, just uh, pay good respect to where pin one is at, which is the red pin on the, the programmer clip and the dotted pin on the chip. And um, that's the information that you need to know. And uh, that's about all I know. So I'm probably not gonna be able to respond to comments at all, but hopefully that helps you get the setup going. And uh, you know, you can do some backups that way. I will also mention, um, I'm gonna disconnect this thing now. So this is barely warm to the touch. If it is hot, it's because you have a short somewhere uh, in what you're programming or your pinout. 
So um, there's also a light that's always on when there's power and one that's on when it's doing reading and writing. So uh, pay attention to that too.